It's time now for our cheapskate alternatives. For those who want all the qualities of the expensive cars elsewhere on the show, but on a budget of pure peanuts. Slinky styling, front engine power, and a spine-tingling chassis. These are the best beer money substitutes to the Vanquish that Jason grappled with earlier. Only, instead of costing 190 grand, these bad boys can be had from just a thousand. I'll begin with the most affordable, the Ford Puma. These little pussycats started at around £12,000 when they were new. Now, you can pick one up for just a thousand. What's mad about this car is that it's over 15 years old. And in my eyes, it, it just doesn't look that old. Perhaps it's because it was designed by the same man that designed the Aston Martin DB9 and Vanquish and DB7 and the current crop of beautiful Jaguars. You're getting nearly 40 to the gallon out of one, unless you drive it like me. But the great thing is the chassis is built to cope with all the power that you're chucking in. You can just bug it into any corner you like and it, it's got your back. So, you're tempted, but what should you check before buying? Let's talk about rust, because rust really likes a Puma. The reason being, these inner arch liners here are made of fabric, and they draw in and they hold the moisture, and that rots out the edges here. To replace the arch panels and have them painted can cost you 300 quid a corner. Also, check the heater works, as it's a common, although not too pricey, fault. Finally, while the 1.4 and 1.6 engines are pretty tough, the 1.7 is a bit picky when it comes to oil. First things first, make sure it's got oil in it. Second thing, make sure it's been changed regularly. Every 5,000 miles is perfect. And make sure it's had the right oil put in it, the 5 to 30 weight semi-synthetic. The Puma is a genuine bargain, but if you're feeling a little bit more flush, then let me introduce you to the BMW 850i. The reason why I'm showing you the 850 is because it shares the same number of cylinders as the Aston Vanquish. There's two choice changes that the owner of this car that I'm driving has made to improve it. One of them is the throttle response. It was known to be sluggish with the V12, so for 300 quid you can buy a different ECU chip and it just revolutionises the throttle response. It's now really, really tight. The other thing is the noise. You can tell this has definitely got a different exhaust fitted because the standard exhaust was just a bit too quiet. 60. <laughs> the 850 is a chest wig on wheels, but what should you check before buying? One area to check thoroughly is the suspension, because there's an awful lot of ball joints and bushes on this complex setup. And because the car's quite heavy, and also they're getting on a bit in terms of age, they tend to wear these bits out. Get it on a ramp, ideally, and have a visual check, or take it out on the road, get it up to motorway speeds, and check to see if the car's meandering or shuddering around. If you need to replace all four suspension joints, it can cost you 1,500 quid. Next, start the engine. The V12's known for being a dependable tank of a motor, but listen to it when it's running for any loud cam noises, because the oil rail that lubricates the camshaft underneath there is known to have bolts that work loose. And if they do so, it starves the cam of oil. And if that happens, you'll expect a two grand bill. The 850 is a striking motor, but I have one more trick up my sleeve. Something so modern that it's still for sale brand new today. The Jaguar XK. Believe it or not, these cost from just £15,000. 15 grand for this. It's just astonishing bang for your buck. Now, the only difference between this car and the Jag XK that you can go and buy today, the new one, is that the engine's five litre, and there's some very, very small design changes which you or I won't really notice, and your neighbours definitely won't. I don't think of this as a being a poor man's Aston. I think it's a, a car that's credible. It's down on power, but it really isn't down on anything else. It's certainly not down on build quality compared to an Aston. But the great thing about the XK is it's not just fast, it just loves corners. It just feels so much lighter. 
thanks to its aluminium construction. You wouldn't buy this and be disappointed. In fact, it's probably the best 15 grand you'll ever spend. The XK is incredibly reliable, but it's worth checking that all the snazzy interior gadgets do work. And have a look at the tyres. As a powerful rear-wheel drive car, you can easily get through a set of these in under 15,000 miles. And when the back ones cost 600 quid for a pair, it's worth checking there's plenty of meat left on them before you buy. It's a given that a car this young and of this calibre should have a full service history, but also check whether it's ever had a gearbox oil change, because although Jaguar say it doesn't need to be done, a lot of specialists we spoke to recommend it being done every 80,000 miles to keep it tip-top. These three offer some of the Aston Martin experience for a fraction of the price. If you can't afford a Vanquish, these are the best cheapskate alternatives.